last time these two teams met in Hilton Coliseum, LaFesta Rhodes had the game of his life. In all, Rhodes scored 54, and Iowa State needed every one of his record-setting points to overtake Iowa in overtime, 102 to 100. But it was a different story last year at Carver Hawkeye Arena. B.J. Armstrong pumped in 24, Roy Marble added 23, and Ed Horton 16 to power Iowa over Iowa State, 91 to 71. But those three are now in the NBA. Both teams come to battle tonight with a bounty of youthful but talented newcomers. And believe me, they're ready. You always dream about that as a kid growing up in Iowa, you know, playing this such a game like this. And, and I know it's going to be loud, and there will be a lot of fans and a lot of be on the line. So we just have to, we just have to play hard. We'll be fired up. I think we'll be ready to play. I, I just sometimes we're not sure at the level at which we can play, but I know that the intensity level will be. We should be pretty good. They're better than people thought they were, coach. And I knew they were. They got good players. Tom Davis a good coach, and it'll be a dinger. Everybody, Mark Matthew along with Gary Thompson. No need to tell you much about this one, except we've got a whale of a battle going on inside tonight, Gary. Well, Mark, we certainly will for Iowa. Les Jepsen just playing lights out this year with the MVP and the Man of Classics set career highs in scoring and rebounding. As a matter of fact, Jepsen outplayed Victor Alexander last year, but Victor's off to a good start. Well, he had two 25-point games, then went to Michigan and fell a little bit there. They doubled and tripled him. He's got to be tough inside and play a lot more aggressive on the inside. We're set for the big one. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes 4-0. The Iowa State Cyclones 2-1. Back with the starting lineups and the game right after this timeout. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to James H. Hilton Coliseum for tonight's game between the University of Iowa and Iowa State University. Meet the starting lineups for tonight's game. First of all, for the visiting Hawkeyes, at forward, a six foot five inch sophomore from Fort Dodge, number 34, Wade Lookingville. At forward, a six foot eight inch senior from Belleville, Illinois, number 45, Michael Ingram. At center, a seven foot senior from Bow Bells, North Dakota, number 51, Les. Jepson. At one guard, a six foot four inch sophomore from Carson, California, number 24, James Moses. And at the other guard, a six foot sophomore from Palmer, number 11, Troy Skinner. the starting lineup for your Iowa State Cyclones. At forward, a six foot eight inch junior from Lansing, Michigan, number 34, Kirk Baker. At forward, a six four junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Adrian Moore. Center, a six foot nine inch junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 52, Victor Alexander. At 
one guard, a six foot two inch freshman from Flint, Michigan, number 24, Justice Thigpen. for the nice game from the Big 8 and Big 10. Ron Grissom, Ed Hightower, and Ron Zetcher. And we'll be back to Hilton Coliseum for the tip-off right after this timeout. The Mike telecast, a copyrighted presentation of the Cyclone Television Network. And he used to rebroadcast of this material without the express written consent of the Cyclone Television Network is prohibited. It's the 42nd meeting between these two teams. Iowa leads 30-11. Iowa defeated ISU by 20 in Iowa City in 1988. But of course, the last time they played here in Hilton Coliseum, it was an overtime thriller. Probably one that will never be equal. Lopesta Rhodes with 54 points. Iowa State a two-point winner in double overtime. Iowa State controls the tip. And Iowa opening up man-to-man. -man. Woods for three. Great start for the Cyclones. Terry Woods off to his best shooting year of his career. His best was 44% in his sophomore season. There he gets a steal off Skinner. Cyclones off to a big start. The kind of a start you like in this kind of a ball game. We've got two guys going at each other, Skinner and Woods. It was supposed to be Iowa's press bothering Iowa State, but the Cyclones just that quickly. We'll look for Woods to give Skinner problems because Skinner does not have the foot speed. He can take it down Woods a, a lot quicker. I'm not... Let's take another look at the steal right here. Terry Woods picks the pocket of Troy Skinner. And then with nobody behind, he just goes right in, takes a look at him over his shoulder, lays it up off the glass. It's a 5-0 lead for Iowa State. And he's Woods is talking to him. He's getting it into his face. Skinner didn't like it. Well, they talked things over, and the referees said, hey, fellas, let's make a good, clean ball game out of this. Both teams shook hands, and we're back to action. First possession for the Hawkeyes. 5-0 Iowa State in less than 30 seconds. Ray Thompson not starting tonight. Tom Davis said he liked the starting five that started in the Amanda Hawkeye Classic. He'll go that way. Thompson will come off the bench tonight. And look at the defense by Iowa State. You see the Hawks take a lot of time on offense. They run that shuffle cut along the baseline. Skinner. He's been struggling. He's off to the start he needs. Boy, if ever they needed a shot, that was it. Because Skinner has been hitting very poorly from outside. And a loose ball on the court. They'll tie it up. Possession arrow will go to the Hawkeyes. <laughs> Kirk Baker, first-year player for Iowa State. There you see the pass hit him in the knee. Loses possession of it. Down he goes. Got a jump ball. Iowa gets it. Iowa State had possession on the opening tip. So Iowa now can cut it down. They can actually tie it with a three-pointer if they try it. See the action underneath along the baseline. You see the Hawks. And there's a bad pass out of bounds. But instead, Troy Skinner throws it away. And turnover number two for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tom Davis in his fourth year at Iowa. And he has the best winning percentage of any coach in Iowa history. 81 and 25 coming into tonight's game. That's a 76% win record. I would say that's setting up in a 1-4 box along the uh, free throw line. Jepson knocks it away from Alexander. Bounce pass loose underneath. Last touch to Iowa. Iowa State will retain possession. And Jepson doing a good job in the early going, denying Victor Alexander the basketball. Well, at seven foot tall, you see him right here. You want to go in that pass down low. Keep it down low. Hook the ball around the bounce pass. Jepson will not be able to get to that type of pass on the interior. Baker off the inbound pass. Well, seven to two, Iowa State. Well, Baker saddled with a couple early fouls at Michigan, only played 22 minutes. Woo, and there is the pick by Jepson, and a good pick. Skinner tries to go inside to Jepson, deflected out of there. Moses. <laughs> Iowa content to run down that shot clock. Patient on offense. I'm not so sure that they're anxious to get into the up-and-down uh, game that they have been in the past year. 
Moses misfires. Rebound to bat Victor Alexander and a foul on Skinner as Thigpen had position. And quickly, Tom Davis going to his bench now as A.C. Earl will be checking in at the scorer's table. Earl, a 6'10", 225-pound freshman, comes into the lineup now. So double big towers inside, 7-foot Les Jepsen, 6'10", A.C. Earl. And it's Jepsen guarding the inbounds pass, and it's taken away from Terry Woods by Moses. Moses leads the Hawks and steals along with Garner. Eight each coming to that game. That's nine for Moses. And a foul on Justice Thigpen. So now the fouls even at one apiece. And here comes Ray Thompson. It only took two minutes, 45 seconds before Looking Bill goes to the bench and Thompson comes in. Ray Thompson, a sophomore from Summit, Illinois. And Thompson, a super player, a very smooth player. He's a guy that's tough on the press, too. He's probably their best man on the press. Iowa now with the, their largest lineup in the ball game, And Big Ten with another steal. Turnovers killing the Hawkeyes early. Woods for three. Only two. He hit the line. And Terry Woods is now three for three tonight, including a three-pointer. Well, he looks like, hey, come out ready to play, and he's the kind of player right now that's feeling. He feels the shot. Look for him to put it up more often. Moses has room, tries to go baseline. Baker cuts him off and draws the foul. Kirk Baker, a new transfer into Iowa State this year. Second team foul, first on Baker. Is that your official? You see Moses go in the baseline. Give that away, you're near trouble. Baker tries to come across and protect. Moses takes the ball away from the defensive man, and Baker across the arm. There's Kirk Baker. Brian Garner just checked into the lineup for Iowa, replacing Troy Skinner. Moses with a couple. Well, the Hawks have shot 88 more free throws than their opponents in this early part of the season. For the season, Iowa State has shot 62 times from the line. Iowa, 144. Shows you where they're going with their offense inside. Moses, only a 60% free throw shooter on the season so far, hits both. Here's Iowa State beating the pressure. Rejected by Earl. He's a shot blocker. And he blocks Victor Alexander, then goes down and loses it. But a tremendous defensive play by A.C. Earl at the opposite end. And now the Iowa press. And Iowa State breaks it by going half court to Baker. Well, I think Iowa State uh, is the kind of, kind of club under Johnny Orr that's good against a Tom Davis team on that press because they'll attack it. I think you have to attack the press. And I said that Woods is stealing and he's going to take the shot. Four in a row for Woods. Ten points already and the Hawkeyes throw it away. Let's go back down to the other end of the court and take a look at a superb defensive effort by Earl. Little flip pass. Look at A.C. Earl, a redshirt freshman, waits on Victor Alexander, gets the ball at the top of his jump. He leads the Hawks in blocks. He's got 12. That's his 13. Iowa State basketball. Woods fighting for the ball on the inbounds pass. Gets it. It's three on three. Plus court. Baker in the paint. He'll have to fire. And he's fouled. It looked like Baker almost pumped it once too many. Foul is going to be on A.C. Earl, his first. And now another substitution in Tom Davis's lineup. Coming back into the ballgame, Michael Ingram and Les Jepsen will go out for a rest. So Tom Davis certainly concerned about keeping his players rested as possible. Well, he always does. He rotates a lot of people and keeps it... Uh, keeps him fresh. Also, one of the things, I think one of the big things about his game with the press is that he tries to take rhythm away from you with the substitutions because it deadens you. Every time you got to start from a standstill, throw the ball in and then fight the pressure. That's part of his game. He's been very successful for that man right there, Dr. Tom Davis. Kirk Baker, the leading free thrower in the starting five for Iowa State, hitting at an 81% clip, is one for one with three points. And Iowa State is up by 10. And again, full court pressure being deployed by Iowa. So 
with a big man in that uh, receiving position early, could not attack the press. They actually had three on two. They had to set it up to go to the half-court game. Thompson works his way to within three, misses it, down with a rebound. Ingram, fans wanted traveling, but instead it's two. He's going to travel. It might have been a hang-on by uh, Adrian Moore, too. He used some strength to get that ball to the basket. Inside, Alexander on his back Earl, and that's two on the big man. And AC won't last long at that rate. Tom Davis going to the bench again. Interesting thing about uh, AC Earl, he is an Illinois All-Stater, but he was coached by Jack the Builder, who is a former Iowa State player. Jay Webb comes in for AC Earl, but there's time out on the court. 15.30 to go on the first. Iowa State by eight, 14 to six. Here's an old Milwaukee, old Milwaukee light quick stat. And look at the shooting. I don't think you're going to trail them in a game, Scary, when you fail to miss a shot. Oh, that's right. And in the turnover department, Iowa's committed five. Iowa State, two. Iowa's got two points off the turnover. Iowa State, meanwhile, has converted nine points off those five turnovers. Iowa State will have the basketball. 15-30 to go in the first half. And an eight-point Cyclone lead in the early going. Inside Alexander for the easy two. He's fouled and counting. When the cut through by Baker forced uh, Alexander's man there covering in the area to help off, and then they got to watch more right now. See, Baker's man cut through, forced the defensive man to take him, and then they hit Victor wide open inside. He gets fouled. Chance to convert it for the three-point play. Michael Ingram picks up the foul, his first, and Alexander misses the free throw. Last touch by Iowa State, out of bounds, Iowa. Boy, and free throws have been a struggle for both clubs. Iowa State 62.9%. And the Hawks, 61.8%. Here's that full court pressure by Iowa State once again. Garner working against Woods. And Garner's got the quickness. He can break you down in comparison to Skinner, who will work the ball down. Last touch by Iowa State, retained by Iowa. You know, it's one of the things they did with Skinner in there. They brought up Jepson to the postman to set a pick so he could rub him off of him. Here they just kind of let Garner bring it up on his own. Jepson checking back into the lineup now and Ingram going back to the bench. Les Jepson really having a marvelous start this season for the Hawkeyes. Career highs of 24 points and 17 rebounds and a man of classic. Way outside deflected by Thigpen. It's a two on none. Woods to Thigpen. And he misses the easy one and Woods tips it in. Not a bad move that time by Woods if he'd have kept it. That's an unselfish play, but he had the angle to take it up off the glass. Garner the goes in, misses the easy five-footer. He's open. Alexander, bounce pass through the heat, last to touch it. it was, Iowa it was and Iowa State will retain it. And let's take another look at the miss by Thigpen, the follow by 5'9", Terry Woods. See the difference there? Thigpen's coming right down side. He makes a difficult shot. He takes it for the left hand, gets himself too far in. Woods that time, he was unselfish. Like I said, he had the angle to take the ball to the basket and lay it up off the glass. Terry Woods with a dozen points already in the ball game, and this is only five minutes old. Adrian Moore puts his name in the book. And Iowa State is up by 14. Boy, in a place where I thought I would be strong is down underneath protecting that basket. It's been hurting him here in the early going. Jepson can't get it. Out of bounds, Iowa. Last touch by Thigpen. Offensive rhythm for Iowa State in this man's club right now. I don't think what they want. I think they're playing a little faster pace than what they can play with the lineup they've got. Two substitutions checking into the lineup. AC Earl comes back replacing Jay Webb. And Paul Dorfell comes in to give Kirk Baker a rest for Iowa State. ISU has won four of the last six meetings and four of the last six mythical state championships. Notice Garner had the shot, turned it down, basically likes to drive and penetrate. Woods almost with the steal again. The irony of these two teams this year, Mark, is the three-point shot. Iowa State's only taken 10. They've hit in three. Iowa's has shot 32, only hit nine. So neither one effective from outside. Thompson draws the foul and gets the basket. Ray Thompson drew Alexander in the air, and we'll see who gets the foul because there was couple of contacts there. The foul will be on Dorfell. Ray Thompson, a smooth player, and he's at his best, going to that basket, snaking around, moving the ball around, taking it up off the glass, in close. First two points of the ball game for Thompson, and he makes it a three-point play. 
Iowa, three of three at the line. Dorfell with a pass intended for Alexander, overthrown, out of bounds, turnover. Iowa State will go the other way. Well, Iowa State handled, been handling that press pretty well in the early going. That time uh, they throw it away. Earl, bounce pass down low, and they hit the line with it to Thompson. It's another turnover for Iowa. Talking about the three-point shooting, Gary, Iowa comes into the ball game hitting only 28% from three-point range. Iowa State only 30% from three-point range as a team. Good trap that time by Iowa. Really clamped, there was nowhere to go. This is the second pass in that trap is what you really have to make to open up the backside. Of course, it's always tough to get that initial one in, but the second one is really what lets you go and get out on that break with numbers in your favor. There comes the zone. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two, or could go to a 3-2. Looking Bill out top. Skinner and Looking Bill both back in the lineup now. And Thigpen will take it from two-point range. Off the heel of the iron. Tipped out of there by Moore. Here's a breakaway by Thompson. And he slams it home. Steal by Thompson making his presence felt. Came off the bench after that one-game suspension. Had 22 points. Five quick points for Thompson. Woods pulls up. And he is red hot. Terry Woods with 14 points already. Well, he had the man open, wide open to the side. But right now, like I said, he's looking for the shot because he so has such a hot hand. Iowa State by 11. 22-11, 13-20 to play first half. <laughs> Iowa State playing somewhat of almost a matchup or sagging man to man and now they shift here's Thompson on the drive spins into the lane and nice move this is his play right there two guys probably will be able to break the the defense down with that type of play going in the basket Moses and uh, Thompson Iowa State hustles up court Woods wanted the shot but then decides to pull it up Back handed pass to Moore misses it loose ball rebound Iowa Skinner almost has it taken away. Thompson, three-pointer. He will not take the shot outside that often, but he, he doesn't like to put the ball on the floor, but he will take the standing jumper just like he did there, and he hits it often enough to keep you honest. This time Woods goes into the paint, beats to Alexander, lays it up and in. And Victor Alexander has four in the book. Point, Iowa State lead 24-16. We're down to the 12-minute mark, first half. And I mean to tell you, there is a flock of substitutes ready to check in for both teams at the scorer's table. Well, one thing, the way to help out on that, uh, the cut on the baseline is to overplay that guard, not let him make that swing pass. Skinner not even looking for the shot outside. This time, he dribbles to the free-throw line, and he is 2 of 2 tonight. Troy Skinner, who has been struggling, has come alive tonight. And Woods has it partially blocked. Saved by Adrian Good Moore, by Earl and he steps on the line, out of bounds. And now, a host of changes. Moses and Ingram coming into the Iowa lineup. Kirk Baker, and also, it'll be Brian Pearson for Iowa State. But first, timeout. Sponsored by Garst. At Garst, it just keeps getting better. And they are wild here tonight at a sold-out Hilton Coliseum. Packed to the Raptors. And Tom Davis trying to get his Hawkeyes on track. Les Jepson, who was figured to have quite a fight with Victor Alexander inside, has yet to score a point for Iowa. Meanwhile, for Iowa State, it's been the Terry Woods show so far. As Woods has led... Everybody with about 14 points so far in the ballgame. And Ray Thompson, what a start he is having tonight. Didn't start the ballgame, but coming off the bench, and he has double figures to lead Iowa. 11-23 to go first half. A six-point margin, and Iowa can trim it down to size right here. Looks like Iowa State might be playing uh, the triangle, too. Let's see what happens here. Brian Pearson in at point guard now, giving Woods some rest, and instead Moses comes in, hits the basket, but it is nullified by an offensive charge. 
And James Mose, you see, gets the baseline again on Thigpen, who has some trouble defensively, but Baker stands there, takes the charge. So it's still a six-point lead, 24-18. And Iowa still putting on the trap pressure in the backcourt. Brian Pearson looks long to the baseline to beat it. Pearson wide open, and I don't think Iowa's too concerned about his shooting. He hasn't been hot either. Baseline, turnaround by Baker. Misses it, looking Bill, grabs the rebound. And Iowa comes down in a hurry. Iowa, well, good rebounding club. Uh, they have a rebound margin on the air. That looked like steps of 15 rebound margin. Instead, they give it to Brian Garner, give two to the young guard, and that quickly, it's back to a four-point ball game. 24-20. This is the kind of club Iowa always is. They'll play in some spurts and might get down, but Tom Davis never varies much in his game plan. He might uh, change the presses a little bit here and there. They'll always good to make a run. Dorfell launches an unpopular shot from the corner. And right now, I've noticed a couple of careless plays by Iowa State. There they come back with a steal. They jumped out to the lead early and easy, Mark. But uh, they made a couple of careless uh, plays these last few times down. Foul on Ingram, reaching in on Pearson. Ray Thompson back at the scorer's table, coming into the lineup once again. So will Terry Woods. And here's the turnover story. Nine to four. Iowa leading in a category they certainly don't want to. Iowa State has had a 14-point lead. It is cut now down to just four. Les Jepson back into the Hawkeye lineup for Ingram. And boy, what a big target he puts on here, trying to block that inbounds pass. Chuck Offenberger has a little contest going on. If you saw Chuck's Iowa boy column in the register a couple of days ago, he said quickly, what's the best description of what Les Jepsen looks like when he's doing that? More about that in a moment. Pearson hits from outside for three. Thompson responds. Jepsen crashes the board, and it's Iowa State basketball. Well, you mentioned Pearson. He's not been shooting the ball, but he's only taken nine shots. But there he gets his shot, a standstill jumper. Watch, here's Pearson right now, working hard on defense, comes over, makes the man pull up and take the shot. Ball deflected out of bounds. Off Victor Alexander's hands. He hits the sideline with it, and a turnover for Iowa State. 27-20, Cyclones leading at the nine-and-a-half-minute mark. Thompson gets Alexander up in the air, and the foul will be on Victor. That's foul number one on the all-Big 8 center. Well, you're looking at the guy who's picked uh, by Big 8 Riders as the preseason player of the year in the Big 8 Conference. Had a sensational year last year. Only the fourth team foul, and it was on the floor, so it's out of bounds, Iowa. Moses almost bottled it. Instead, fires off balance. Rebound up in the air, out of bounds. Saved by Woods to Moses. Cross court pass to Johnny Owen. And Moses makes the bad pass there. I was going to make a comment about him. They say that uh, Moses only shoots when the ball hits his hand. <laughs> he likes to put it up. Streak shooter, but he can throw it full, too. And again, Les Jepson all over Dorfell, but Iowa State gets it in. Now looking for a trap. And Woods dribbles around it. Goes to the wing. Pearson feels it, but misses it. Jepson down with a rebound. Quick outlet to Moses. Jepson just averaging just 13.3 rebounds a game. Moses, his first field goal of the ball game, his fourth point. And Pearson and Dorfell team up to beat the Iowa pressure. Dorfell missed the sideline, man. That Baker, that's it right there. That's wide open. Then you heard it on the other end. They ended up with the same results, but he was open earlier here on the sideline. Fourth point of the game for Kirk Baker. It's back to seven. Thompson. Body fakes, launches in motion, rebound, tipped into the hands of Les Jepsen, who slams it home. And Les Jepsen has just scored his first two of the ball game at the 824 mark. Two on one. Oh. Woods pulls up and drains it. Well, he makes the jumper. I'm looking for him right there to take it up in the air and then uh, make the big man commit and then dish off. But he gets the two. He's shooting so well right now. 16 in the ball game for Woods. Thompson in traffic, and they set it up again. See, we had him look like in a zone Iowa State a while ago, but let's see what they're doing this time. They're man for man. 
Iowa's last win in Ames was back December 8th, 1981. That was an 11 point victory, 79 68. So it's been a long time since the Hawkeyes have tasted victory in this community. Skinner's shot, first one he misses. Long outlet pass down to Pearson, chases it down, tries to save it, and then a foul on Dorfell as he collides with Brig Tubbs. Well, the pass by Victor Alexander is what you talk about when a quarterback, when he's got a receiver wide open 20 yards downfield. You don't line drive the pass. You throw it soft and let him run under it, and that's what he should have done. That's team foul number five on Iowa State. On Dorfeld, his second of the ball game. Woods? Nice. Well, there's time out on the court. 7.26 to go, first half. Iowa State by 7, 31-24. Now it's time to take a look at some other scores from games going on tonight. Brought to you by Long John Silver's. Celebrate the season where you can get a holiday strip meal at Long John Silver's. North Carolina State, Jimmy Valvano's Wolfpack leading to Kane tonight. 60-31 at halftime. And our score, 7-26 remaining in the first half. 31-24. And Cyclone fans, take a look at this picture. Cyclone Stadium, full color, filled with fans. Taking the day of the Iowa-Iowa State game. And you can get your 25-inch by 30-inch color poster of this picture for just $25 by sending a check or money order to Elbar Limited. Post Office Box 568 TV, Des Moines, Iowa, 50302. And we'll give you that address again later in the broadcast. Iowa with the basketball. 31-24, the Hawkeyes trailing. 7.15 to go first half. Iowa State now, after coming off the timeout, it looks like the hands up that they may have switched this time. Let's see if they do go to the zone. All right now, it looks like 2-3. 2-3 or 2-1-2, as Phil Koontz gives Victor Alexander a little relief on the bench. Koontz in the Cyclone lineup. Trying to clog up the middle. It's Pearson and Woods at the guards. Ingram tries to go against Koontz. And what's the call? It is traveling. The Cyclones catch a break there because they're giving up that baseline way too often. You give up that baseline, usually nothing but bad happens. You see it right there. See him on the inside. Doesn't cut him off. And there's the steps. And now Iowa pressure again. By the way, nobody can complain about the officials tonight because all three of these gentlemen work both Big Ten and Big Eight. Woods to Kuntz, and Kuntz draws the foul from Earl, and that is number three on the big man. That's where Iowa State needs to look. It's up this sideline. That pass is open and back to the middle, and the numbers are there. Kuntz does a great job right here on this layup of taking the ball up high and challenging, going right at ACR. Watch here. Flip pass back. Watch him go up here and extend. You see how he reaches? And he gets above Earl this time instead of laying the ball up like a small man. Well, if you're going to foul anybody on Iowa State's team, Koontz is the man to foul, hitting only 22% at the free throw line. And that number just declined. Rig Tubbs came into the Iowa lineup as we were looking at that replay. The sophomore from DeWitt replaces A.C. Earl, benched with three fouls. It's the same problem at the free throw line that uh, Skinner's been having from the outside. Just need that confidence. They're good shooters, but becomes a head case for him. Uh, Skinner's gotten the monkey off his back tonight. One of two for Coots. Iowa trails by eight. Thompson tries to shrink it down to size. Rebound taken out of the hands of Coots by Ingram. Laid back up and in. And he took the ball down low, and that's your strip. There's the press. Oh, good hustle and dive. Who is that? Tied up. Pearson, and I believe Ingram. And the possession arrow this time will go to Iowa State. So now the pressure is starting to bother Iowa State somewhat. It didn't in the early going. Tom Davis applauding that play, and rightfully so. Boy, there's nothing I like better than to see kids that will hustle, give up their body, dive on that floor for loose balls. That's what Michael Ingram did. Dorfell being hounded now by Ingram. Woods cornered in the trap, but he is also fouled by Wade Looking Bill. Good job by Terry Woods beating the double team that time. He has the quickness there to break out. First foul on Looking Bill, and obviously Iowa State in the bonus as we take another look at it. You see, Looking Bill makes the mistake right there. He doesn't cut off the backside. He doesn't really have him pinned, and he gives him an outlet. Terry Woods goes to the line for the first time tonight. 67% free thrower on the season. And he misses it. 
32-26, Iowa State. Six minutes left to go, first half. Tubbs looks for help, gets it from Moses for three. And the rebound, chased down by Paul Dorfeld. And Iowa leading the rebounds, 13 to seven. Good defensive play by Garner as he stops Terry Woods cold. Iowa gets possession, looking Bill gets fouled. Dorfeld picks up number three, he'll have to sit down. John Grissom, one of the officials. Watch here. Gives it up, got uh, Pearson picked off. Makes a straight pass right there to Looking Bell, and Dorfell over the top. Fouls him and makes sure that he doesn't get the ball to the basket. Makes him go to the line, hit two. But Looking Bell, 92% free throw shooter in the year. Best free thrower on the Hawkeye squad. And he rings up the first one. And now Adrian Moore coming back into the Iowa State lineup. Moore, a starter, replaces Dorfell before he gets in deeper trouble already with three. So Dorfell sits down, scoreless in the ball game, And his offensive output has certainly come to a speaking halt tonight. And looking Bill gets a pair. We're down to a four-point ball game once again. It was 14 earlier in the first half. Baker takes it across to Woods, back to Baker, and he stopped. And they'll set it up again. And Garner did a nice job that time. The numbers were going to be there, Dan, but he faked at his man and then went back to the passing lane and took the open pass away. Brian Pearson wanted the basketball wide open in the corner, and Garner took the shot away. Inside the Kuntz, he spins, lays it up, and in. Well, this is what Johnny Orr is looking for out of this guy. He struggled a little bit, get it inside. He's strong in there, and he's taking the ball to the basket. Coons falls down, or Garner falls down with it. Then a loose ball in the court, picked up by Moses. Garner's got some athletic ability. They went down, but still had the presence of mind to recover and tip that ball out to his teammate. Iowa State settling back in a 2-3 zone. Moses has it partially deflected by Woods and then saves it. Well, we said Moses uh, only shoots when he, uh, when he touches <laughs> it, and he's ready. Well, you mean every time? Here's Woods with a steal. A breakaway, and it should be an easy two, and it is. That's the pass I'm talking about when the Hawks want to reverse the ball. If you're cheating out there, show it to him, and then dot out and get it. There's a foul. Moore can't go up and grab Les Jepsen like that. And Tom Davis is hot. Seventh team foul now on Iowa State. So it puts Iowa at the line. The foul is on Adrian Moore, his first. There's a steal on the reverse pass. It gets in between there. Moses gets him in the face. He's looking back. All you want to do there is just take the ball hard to the basket. Don't Jepsen. be looking back. A 60% shooter, 66% from the line. Misses it. Baker comes down with it for Iowa State. Four and a half to go, first half. Iowa cut it to four twice, and it is back up to an eight-point lead, and here's a foul against the Hawkeyes. Moses and Tom Davis. A portrait of frustration right now. Terry Woods, Harry crosses over the dribble, loses control of it, and then from behind, Moses tries, looks like he tries to avoid him. Not a whole lot of contact on the play. Woods 0 of 1 at the line just a minute ago. And he'll have one in bonus. And this time he's on target. For the season, Terry's hitting 67% from the line. And as a matter of fact, right now, that is his 19th point. If he hits this one, he'll tie his career high. And he's done it in the first half. Well, he's in double figures all four games. There's the press by Iowa State. Looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. Loose ball, bad pass. Picked off by Baker to Woods. Woods, hands off to Coop. Woods is doing a nice job there. He's penetrating deep, taking the defense to him, and then kicking back out. Coons delivering. Moses now hustling down, has his pocket picked from behind by Brian Pearson. Out of bounds, Iowa, but listen to the crowd. Ironically, Pearson and Skinner, as everyone knows in the state of Iowa, are best friends and former teammates. Substitutions now. Coming back in for Iowa, Michael Ingram going out will be Brig Tubbs. And Hilton Coliseum is at a roar. 
Woods, Pearson. Count it, and he's fouled. Beautiful pass again. Woods now, instead of taking the ball, he delivers the ball when he has to. Watch here. If he doesn't pass this ball right here, he never makes it in. Because look at Garner. He's coming. He almost gets there anyhow. But Pearson, an ambidextrous kid, watch it. To his advantage here. He can take it away from the defensive man with his left hand. Lays it up. Look at the concentration as he takes it up. Iowa State Cyclones out to a 42-28 point lead. Here's an old Milwaukee. Old Milwaukee like quick stat. The points off turnovers. Wow, what a difference there. 17 to 6. And as the sign says, whoo-wee, man, it's a dinger. And that's what Johnny Orr thought this one would be. But right now, his Cyclones have roared back on top 42 to 28, equaling their largest margin of the first half. And Terry Woods, who ever thought the youngster, the littlest man on the court, would equal his career high in just 15 minutes of play tonight. 20 points for Woods in the first half. And Brian Pearson trying to make it a three-point play as Tom Davis paces the sideline. He doesn't like what he's seen in the last few minutes. And Pearson off the bench has really made a major contribution for the Cyclones here in the first half. Six points. And another turnover for the Hawkeyes. Garner says it should be Iowa basketball. Instead, it belongs to Iowa State. They'll have a chance to go on top by 16, which would be their largest lead of the ball game. Not making any excuses for Iowa right here, but this is a young ball club on the road for the first time, and turnovers are killing them. Partly them and good defense and pressure by Iowa State. Iowa State, my opinion, the quicker team. Oh, oh is he on it? And that's his career high. 23 points for Terry Woods, and blocking silences the crowd. Well, everybody remembers two years ago here, a young man that nobody had heard of, LaFesta Rhodes, lit up the place with 54 points. Terry Woods comes into the ball game, averaging 16-7 over three games, and already has 23. Well, he's been sensational. There's not much more he can say. And I think he's been at his best in this ball game night. Not, I'm not talking about the shooting, but on the break and delivering the ball at the right time. Brian Garner with his third point of the ball game. Iowa State's biggest lead of the ball game, 46-28. Garner cut it 46-29. And misses the second rebound to Kuntz. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but Johnny Orr is employing a lineup that we haven't seen yet this year, but for maybe a couple of minutes. Victor Alexander, the starting center. Phil Kuntz, the reserve center both in the Cyclone lineup at the same time. And here comes number 42, Jay Webb, 6'8 freshman from San Jose, California. And Les Jepson goes back out for a rest. Jay Webb, as uh, you mentioned, a freshman, a young kid who averaged uh, 24 points and 13 rebounds a game in high school. Moore goes way outside, the inbound. We're down to the 335 mark. Iowa State a 17-point lead right now. Alexander has been shut down, but Terry Woods has not been. Woods to Alexander on his back is Ingram, and Victor will go to the line. It's surprising me a little bit in this ball game that Iowa State, Iowa in the zone again, in the zone that they're able to go inside as effective as they have been. They're either making something happen offensively or drawing fouls, and Iowa is normally tough on that inside defense. They talked about the shot blocking and uh, intimidators inside. And that's also a key foul for the Hawkeyes because number three on Ingram. And he'll have to come out. Greg Tubbs replaces him. Alexander hits the free throw. And for Victor, he's one of two at the line tonight. Only five points in the ballgame for Alexander, who hit 25 his first two contests this season. Well, I felt Iowa State, when they got the big lead, uh, 14 early, they kind of relaxed, uh, took some chances and gambles. You've got to play solid. And this is a key point in the ballgame right here with three minutes to go is that they retain the lead in here and play even at least, not let uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes climb back in. I think one of the key moves in this ballgame came from Johnny Orr, switching the Cyclones from man-to-man -man into a zone, and it has totally shut down Mr. Thompson for Iowa. They cut off their inside game. As you said, they were getting the baseline a lot, that pass right there. 
Last touch by Iowa State. They will not get a new 45 second shot clock, however, and the shot clock down to 10. Garner being replaced by Skinner. And let's see, Tom Davis wants to know if they're going to reset it. Ron Zetcher sends him back to the bench, and now there'll be a conference to say, hey, wait a minute, was the ball kicked or not? If it was just tipped, it is not a reset. If it was kicked, it will be reset. There's reset. the sign. It's a reset. I wasn't sure. I thought he kicked it. So the 45-second clock renewed now for the Hawkeyes. Inside, Thompson. Nice fake. Reverse lay-in. And then a foul after the shot on Koontz. No, I don't think it's going to be a foul. It's going to be basket interference. You're right. Or goal, goal tending. And Thompson may have sprained his ankle. He is limping. Alexander has it stripped away. Moses fires. And four quick points now for Iowa. Iowa with Tom Davis always plays in spurts. Johnny Orr wants a quick timeout. Ray Thompson has a dozen. He is the only Hawkeye in double figures. And Johnny Orr called that timeout. And he is saying right now that he stepped out of bounds. He's talking with Ed Hightower, one of the officials, but that'll do little good. Well, he's saying that the defense is over the out-of-bounds line right there, and it's interesting, uh, Mark, with these officials. If you're an Iowa fan and want to complain, you can call them Big 8. If you're an Iowa State fan and you want to complain about the call, you call them Big 10 because these officials come and work both leagues. Well, I just want to let you know that the Cyclone Television Network will be on the air this coming Saturday evening. And it'll be Iowa State continuing its Big Ten schedule against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. That'll take place 7 o'clock live right here on most of these same CTN stations. And don't forget, nobody likes to talk about Iowa State University basketball more than Johnny Orr. And you can see the Johnny Orr Show on most of these same stations. Be sure to check your local listings for the time and channel in your area. The Johnny Orr Show. Be sure and catch it. Talking about Big Ten opponents, Iowa State will play four Big Ten Conference opponents all in December. And Iowa is the only Big Ten opponent they'll play at home. Iowa State traveled to Michigan last weekend, came up losers on the short end. Johnny Orr's first visit back to the Wolverines in 10 years. Iowa tonight, Minnesota Saturday, and then on December 23rd, the Cyclones will travel into Hoosier country to take on Bobby Knight's red-hot Indiana team. 234 left to play first half. Iowa State leading by 14, 47-33. Tom Davis trying to figure out a way to work against that Iowa State zone. And Johnny Orr doesn't really like to play zone. He hasn't very much over the years, Gary. No, he doesn't. He likes the man for man because he likes quick athletes and feels you put the pressure on him and uh, take him out of the offensive rhythm. Iowa's press has called, caused a few turnovers for Iowa State. This time, Pearson up court to Alexander. He sets it up with Woods. And Iowa now appears to be in sort of a sagging or matchup zone almost. Good shooting in this game by both clubs. Iowa State a red hot 69%. Uh, Iowa 54%. The turnovers have killed them. High post turnaround. Alexander not there. Madrian Moore follows. No good. Baker with a third attempt. And the third time was a charm. Three shots that time. Uh, Iowa was set a good rebounding club on the air, a rebound margin of 15, but they're really standing. Tom Davis got to be upset with that right now, that part of the play. They're just standing around looking at the basketball. Skinner for three, misfires. Pearson with a rebound, outlet to Woods. He and Skinner flips it back to Alexander, and it's going to be a charge on Alexander. What a smart defensive play by Troy Skinner. We complimented Terry all night long, but that's a case right there. You take it in. I said you get a little careless. You take it up. He's going to let you go, or you might get the three-point play. What's here? He's watching him and reading him. Comes here. You see, he doesn't. He doesn't make the defensive man commit. The least he's got to do on that play, if he's going to make that flip, is go up in the air and draw the man to you. He did not do that. Forty-nine, thirty-three. That was the second foul on Alexander. In case you're wondering, offensive means a loss of possession. No shooting for Iowa. Sixteen-point lead. Cubs from outside, and Alexander comes down with a rebound. He looks for help, gets it from Woods, and Iowa State is beating Iowa up the court. Yeah. 
Behind the back pass, Woods into Alexander. His shot blocked by Jepson. He had eight blocks coming into this ball game. Uh, AC Earl has said 12 coming in, so they had 20 of the 25. Jepson spins all over the court. Should have been traveling or a foul because Alexander even shoved him, but no whistle blow. And the fourth point of the game for Jepson. Shot clocks off. Iowa State should definitely go for one. They should, but I don't know if everybody's aware, but not Terry Woods holds up one finger and says, whoa, boys. We've got 25 seconds to put this one away. And now a pushing foul from behind. And it's on Greg Cobbs as he shoves Kirk Baker. Greg Tubbs just losing his poise right here. Sophomore. Watch on the left side. You'll see it right here. Little shove. And now watch Greg Tubbs just pushes him down from behind. Upset a little bit that he might have got a little elbow earlier. But the second guy always gets caught. Also, Gary, a smart move on Johnny Orr because he takes Victor Alexander out of the game. He doesn't want him to get his third foul before halftime. And here's another Long John Silver's score update. 26-22, Brown leading Boston in the first half. Celebrate the season where you can get a holiday shrimp meal at Long John Silver's. Kirk Baker hits the first of a one-and-one. One. Well, he's the best free throw shooter. He's 13 out of 16 coming to this game, a little over 81%. And with three of three tonight. Without him, the Iowa State free throw percentage would be even more dismal. We said shooting 63%. Four for four for Baker. And double figures for the junior college transfer from Lansing, Michigan. 15 seconds on the game clock. You'll see it there on the bottom of your screen. And right now it's a 51-35 lead for Iowa State. Skinner penetrates, gets the two. Iowa State might have a chance. Way up court to Pearson. He'll have to shoot. It'll count. And it's just off the heel of the iron. Wow, what a ball game. And remember last year against Oklahoma State, Pearson hit one of those. Johnny Orr will go to the locker room, as will Tom Davis. One is happy, one is not. Iowa State has a 14-point lead in intermission. Now let's take a look at halftime statistics brought to you by Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. In the shooting department, red hot for both teams, Gary, 61 and 54 percent. Right, the thing that sticks out more than that, though, is the rebounding. And Iowa State out-rebounds Iowa, and the turnover is 14 and 9. And another thing that's not up there is assists. Iowa only had two, Iowa State 13. All right, let's check the individual scoring in the first half. First of all, for Iowa, only one player in double figures, Ray Thompson, coming off the bench with a dozen points. Six for Moses and Skinner, who also is starting to heat up now. Jepson held to only four, as is Ingram, Garner with three. For the Iowa State Cyclones, Terry Woods, what a story, a career-high 23 in the first half alone. Kirk Baker also in twin figures with 10, Pearson with five or six, Alexander five, Coots with five, and Moore with two. And at halftime right now, it's Iowa State leading Iowa 51 to 37. Now it's time to take a look at some other scores from games going on tonight, brought to you by Long John Silvers. Celebrate the season where you can get a holiday shrimp meal at Long John Silvers. First half, early going, Purdue leading Illinois State 12 to 8. Villanova topping Virginia in the second half, 67-62. And Brown leading Boston, 26 -8. 22. Tonight's game is brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by the Garst Seed Company. At Garst, it just keeps getting better. And by Long John Silvers. Celebrate the season where you can get holiday shrimp meals at Long John Silvers. They are rocking in Hilton Coliseum, and this place has been loud tonight. And the key factor that we may have been overlooking, Gary, is the fact that Iowa is playing its first road game of 1989-90, and what a place to start. Well, it's a tough place to come up here. Uh, big eight opponents find that all the time, Hilton Coliseum. And as you said, they are a young ball club, first time on, on the road. So that uh, definitely is a factor. Iowa State, I think, also has had good pressure on them defensively. Uh, both presses have been effective at times, and on the other hand, uh, Iowa State has hurt Iowa's press with some easy, easy baskets. 
The Hawkeyes last won in Ames in 1981, December. That was an 11-point victory. Well, the critical thing here now in the second half, both clubs, is when you come out, I would like to hit it strong early. Dig, uh, cut into the margin real quick. Cut that 14-point lead down. Iowa State needs to, if they can increase it, that's fine. But they need to maintain it through the first three or four minutes. They can kind of control the tempo of the game. For Iowa, Ingram, Looking Bill, Jepson, Moses, and Skinner. Woods, Thigpen, Alexander, Baker, and more for Iowa State. The same starting fives back on the court. Iowa has possession. 51-37. Iowa State by 14. Ingram almost has it stripped away and then draws the foul. And it'll be on Kirk Baker. Now Woods almost had the ball stolen that time from Ingram. He's reaching in behind. He knocked it away, but Ingram was able to control it. And Baker picks up his... Ingram goes to the line shooting only 20% for the year. He's sort of like Phil Kuntz. You get in sort of a bad struggling run, and you can't make him fall. And see, this is what hurts the Hawks right now. He's look at Johnny Orr, 19 to 10 versus uh, Iowa overall. Four and five here with the Cyclones. He's won four of the last six. But the Hawks need those free throws right now. You get the opportunity to cut in. He gets one out of two. Well, that's not 20%. That's 50%. <laughs> and now, again, the pressure being applied by Iowa. Now look at they made a defensive switch. Uh, they got Moses on uh, Terry Woods. Terry Woods with a career high 23 in the first half. More from 15. And he's been a pleasant surprise, I think, from Johnny Orr as far as scoring and shooting. He's shooting 50% coming into this game tonight, averaging seven points a ball game. Inside to the big Jepson. Turns around with a sky hook, but he walks with the ball. I think Jepson a little frustrated here in early going. He didn't have his first basket until 8.29 the first half. Look at him there. He tries to force his way in, does it, and then steps Victor Alexander with his hand straight up. Well, on the inbounds pass, Alexander goes high along with Michael Ingram for the inbounds pass. Contact made the foul whistled against Ingram. And that will be foul number four on Michael Ingram. And Tom Davis wastes no time in getting him to the bench. A.C. Earl back in the lineup now for Iowa. And Earl playing with three fouls. Let's see what this does defensively. If they uh, stay man for man with A.C. Earl and Jepson in the ball game. Here's a three on two. Woods with a late dump to Thigpen. And no place to go with it, so they set it up again. A good penetration by Woods that time. And he drew the man to him and then dished it off. Just a little hard and a little bit behind. If I have any complaint, Jerry, in the first half with Terry Woods' play, it's the fact that he had three behind-the-back passes. And really, nobody was ready for any of them. Yeah, well, uh, uh, behind-the-back pass is okay if it's productive and it's meaningful. You're just putting it on the show, then it, uh, it does... Oh, look at that kick A one-handed <laughs> slap by Victor Alexander. It rockets off the glass and in. Did Victor smile? If he didn't, he should have. Here's Moses, countering on the other end, and drops it through, clean. And Moses is a good penetrator. He and Thompson are really good around that basket. Here's the pass that makes the break, right there. And again, Iowa State outnumbering Iowa, 3-2. to two. Baker slaps it up in the air. It comes down to Woods. He can't fire from there, so outside of Thigpen, back to Woods. Drops it off to Alexander, and too many passes in the paint. Well, a lot of hands right there when you shovel that off. Just drop it down on the floor. Earl gets loose, misses the easy one. Jepson went over back of Thigpen and tips it away to Moses. And now Baker cleans the glass. Woods alley -oop. And an easy two is missed. And then a foul on Skinner as he catches Alexander on the wrist. Well, that's a good read by Woods that time. They had the two-on-one. He couldn't get the angle pass. He lays it up higher. Thigpen, a great leaper right here, goes up, but just lays it off too hard. Gets it too far over the basket. Comes on, and then Victor makes a mistake right there, taking it down where the little guy Skinner can get down to it. Skinner goes out with two fouls. Three changes now in the Iowa lineup, and among them, it's Garner coming in. It's Garner, Ingram, Moses, Thompson, and Earl in the Iowa lineup right now as Alexander 
is pulled from the line, one of four from the free throw line tonight. I said both clubs, you look at Johnny Orr and Jim Hallahan, his assistant, both clubs are poor free throw shooting teams at this stage of the season. That could be a factor in the ball game either way. Alexander, short on the second at Iowa. Tries to drive, and a foul will be called probably on Baker. We'll check in a moment. It is, and that's number three. Well, that's a key foul. Baker played well. You see Moses, got great athletic ability, steps through, and then just reverses it, takes his hand up underneath, tries to flip it up off the board, and Baker across the arc. Better to let that ball go, turn him loose, make him make that shot. Moses, two of two at the line tonight. Make it three of three. And doing a good job. James Moses comes into the game, a 60% free thrower. And he cuts the lead down to 13. Four of four for Moses. And Garner will get whistled for a blocking foul as he tries to move in and cut off Terry Woods. And Brian Garner has foul number two. That's the third team foul on Iowa this half. And let's take another look right down the sideline here, and you'll see the foul. See? Ride him out. Yep. Moore with the inbounds pass to Thigpen. And Iowa now zoning. Woods with a nice fake, then puts it off the glass and in. Good ball fake. That's what a ball fake will do for you. Put it up there, defense, and then goes. Then you make your move. 25 for Terry Woods. And Ingram with nice body English rolls it in underneath over Baker. And Baker had to turn him loose. Iowa State's going to have to get back quicker right now. The Hawks are not looking to set up half court right now. They're aggressive and taking the ball to the basket. Alexander saves it barely. Thigpen dumps it in for Baker. And it's last touch by Iowa. But Iowa State getting sloppy with their passing underneath the hoop. And here comes Phil Coos now in for Alexander. Coons off the bench in that first half really did an excellent job for Iowa State at five points. Bench really contributed. Blocked by Earl on Baker. The second effort won't fall. And it's brought down by Iowa. AC, Odell Davis. You say AC Earl, uh, he's a force in there. He does a good job of waiting. Garner. And they call moving in on Koontz. Koontz thought he was set. But in Hightower, whistles Iowa State for the foul. Number one on Koontz. You see Iowa on the tack right here. A nice bounce pass into Michael Enter. He turns in. You see Koontz coming into him, moving in. Makes, uh, commits the foul right there. The basket. The basket didn't go, did it? I don't believe so. Brig Tubbs back in the lineup now for Iowa. A.C. Earl will sit down. And Michael Ingram goes back to the line. One of two so far tonight. But Ingram, a 20% free throw on the season. So he said the free throw is hurting Iowa right now. He's been up there a couple of times. The big thing in that first half, Iowa that has 88 more free throws in the first four games. Their opponents had six for eight, but Iowa State, nine out of 13. They had five more chances to strike. Misses a pair, but looking Bill wisely goes after it, comes down with the offensive rebound, and then a jump ball. Possession arrow will go to Iowa State. They'll have the ball. And Les Jepson back in now for Iowa, replacing Michael Ingram. 16.37 to play. Iowa State by 13, 57 to 44. Well, and the Hawks missing some golden opportunities there to cut into the lead. Ron Thatcher goes over, asks for the possession arrow. Les Jepson now will be working on the baseline, a towering body over Adrian Moore, who will try to get it inbounds and uses the bounce pass to do it. Iowa State with a three on two right here if they proceed. Back to Baker, and Baker is fouled. And the reaching in foul will be on Wade Looking Bill. But a good penetration against the press for Iowa State. As I said, when you play Iowa, I think that's the thing you have to do. When you play against that press, once you beat it, you need to attack it and make them pay. Otherwise, you spend all night uh, playing right into their hands, giving them opportunities to go for the steals and cause turnovers, but not making them pay the price for it. Team foul number four against Bad Iowa. Bad place to have the ball. 
And Jepson wrapped it up with his knee, last to touch it. Iowa. It'll be retained by Iowa State. Hawks doing a good job of getting the Cyclones trapped deep in that corner where you got both sidelines as uh, extra defenders. That makes it tough to get out of that, that trap. Iowa going back to his own yep. defense now. Looks like 2-3. Turnaround by Cruz. See the difference between Jepson and A.C. Earl is that uh, A.C. Earl can leap a little higher and gets up there. He's a much better shot blocker. Garner has it stuffed on him by Coons. Tubbs fires, doesn't get it. Jepson drops it up and in. And Les Jepson with only his sixth point of the ball game. Last year, he scored nine against Iowa State. Baker, baseline. And again, they had the numbers, uh, three on two. Davis for three. Garner, shovel pass inside the looking bill, and he'll draw the foul. There's Johnny Orr uh, looking at the action, and you're going to look at it again right here as they penetrate in. Here's looking bill comes through, and Moore gets called for the foul, but looks like he really steps away, has his hand straight up. But Iowa attacking the basket. It's almost like Tom Davis says, come out. It said, come out this second half, be aggressive, take the ball to the basket. And that they're giving up on the uh, that shuffle cut on the baseline and just looking to post up down deep. Looking Bill, three of three at the line, has yet to score from the field. And a short conference between assistant coach Jim Hallahan and Johnny Orr. Looking Bill, uh, high game this year, eight points against the Drake Bulldogs. And Iowa State's 14-point halftime lead is trimmed to 11. We've got 15-34 to play here at Hilton Coliseum. And Iowa State holding on 59-48. Here's an old Milwaukee, old Milwaukee like quick stat, scoring by halves in the first half, 51 37. And Iowa picking up the pace here in the second, 11 8. And Iowa State working against pressure again. Here's Woods down to the baseline to Baker. Iowa now out rebounding Iowa State by one. Well, the Hawkeyes shooting 49% in the ballgame. Iowa State hitting 56% and a turnover for the Cyclones. Ahead, Thompson for three. We talked about a standstill shooter, and Iowa making a run right now, and a much more aggressive club, and the momentum has switched right now to the Hawks. The second three-pointer of the game for Thompson. Iowa State's lead down to eight, and Terry Woods now getting a little cool, but a foul called on Brian Garner. And that will be the third on Garner. Difference right now. <laughs> Tom Davis doesn't like the call, but Iowa State getting out on the break and getting numbers, but they're not able to get the penetration to the basket for the layup. Iowa's made adjustment. They're getting back. They were getting two and ones. Now they're three on two, forcing Iowa State to take about the 15 foot jumper. Woods misses the first. Keep in mind what I said about free throws. Either way for either team, poor free throwing clubs, miss free throws. To be important. And what you do here when Iowa State misses, you really give that extra adrenaline momentum to Iowa. Paul Dorfeld checks in, as you saw, replacing Kirk Baker. And Woods hits the second. A nine point Iowa State lead. Moses trying to drive. This time the foul is going to be on. Adrian Moore of Iowa State. Again, Iowa, beating Iowa, uh, Iowa State down the floor and getting an attack position where they got him off balance defensively. There's Adrian Moore. You'll see it. They get it to Moses. He gets him to Moore to make just a little step inside. He can't recover in time. Gets called for the foul. Iowa tried to inbounds during that replay, and he was batted back out of bounds. He got a mismatch inside. Moore on Moses. Jefferson. Three-point range. There it is. There's Far the side pass. rebound. Jepson turns, pumps it against the glass, and it hits the clock. It's out of bounds. Iowa State on top of the backboard. <laughs> Iowa State with Woods, Thigpen, Dorfell, Kuntz, and Adrian Moore in there right now. The tower of strength, Victor Alexander, the leading scorer of the team, an all-Big 8 first-teamer on the bench. And Alexander not very productive so far. Only seven points in the ballgame for the Cyclones. 
Morse, Morse still, still looking had for help. Easy, right, have not had an easy time getting it in. Now they got numbers again. Here's three on two, but Thigpen decides to hold up, then penetrate. Finger roll, won't fall. Earl down with a rebound. Loose on the court. Dorfeld comes up with it. I tell you, if Iowa State had scored in that uh, layup with Thigpen, uh, Davis would have been upset with Moses because he really loafed on the play. He got back there three on three and then just let it turn him loose. Adrian Moore, good pass in the paint, comes back to Dorfell. He misses the lay-in, then follows, misses the second effort. And Dorfell can't buy a basket. Paul Dorfell scoreless in the ball game. You know, and I think one thing that's bothering him when you take it back inside, the presence of Earl and Jepson right there is a factor in putting that ball back up. Here's a foul on the floor. Let's see. I don't believe it's going to count. They say it was on the floor. And here again, one-on-one uh, -on -one moves. He goes there, makes the grab right there, takes it up. Let's see. Foul is on Thigpen. That is his second. It's the 16 foul against Iowa State. Out of bounds, Iowa. Skinner back in the lineup now. So it's Skinner and Davis at the guards. Ingram, Earl, and Thompson down low. Iowa State setting in the zone now, 2-3. Oh. Just under 14 minutes left to play. A nine-point Iowa State lead. Skinner for three. Off the heel of the rim and the rebound to Moore. Ahead to Thigpen, to Woods. Nowhere to go but up. And he misses it. And a foul on the rebound. And they call it on Adrian Moore of Iowa State. Well, Iowa State has really hit a dry shooting spell right now. They're getting, that's a good shot, a great shot. You can't ask for anything more, but you have to knock it down. Fourth foul on Adrian Moore. And I would imagine Johnny Orr is going to substitute for him right now. Victor Alexander ready to check in for Iowa State. That'll also put Iowa at the line because that's the 17th foul. Yeah, Mark, I make the point that Iowa's made the adjustment where they're able to get back with people right now better than they did in the uh, first half. They're forcing, which if you're going to press and give up shots, you want to give up the baseline 15-footer in there. First half, Iowa State was able to take it to the hoop. Moore and Koontz comes out. Baker and Alexander, the two starters back in. And A.C. Earl at the line with one and maybe. And he has yet to make a dash in the scoreboard. Nothing there, but Thompson follows, misses the easy two. Earl follows it up, and now he's in the book. His first two of the ball game, and it's back to a seven-point margin. Remember, twice in the first half, Iowa led by 14, only to have Iowa cut it down to four. The Cyclones right now, they didn't get it on the break the last few times. A good time to take it out, get into some offense. Even look down, Iowa State's in that zone, or I mean, Iowa's in the zone. Here's Woods firing off balance. Alexander follows it on in. And Victor Alexander with his ninth point of the ball game. Big basket for Iowa State. They needed a, a hoop right there to stop the bleeding. Les Jepson getting ready to check in along with James Moses for Iowa at the scorer's table. Johnny Orr telling his team to put their hands up, and they aren't doing it. The alley hoop. It is waved off in the cylinder and Ron Zetcher the official is disqualifying the basket and Tom Davis is livid now let's take another look in slow motion if it's in his downward arc over the cylinder he can't touch it Ooh, I think so he never caught the ball all he did was sort of tip it down then hard to see from this far away from this angle, boy, I couldn't tell. Let's see. See right here. Did you get it? Yeah, I that's, a, that's a tough call. That's close. The problem that Tom Davis has is that Ron Zetcher, who made the call, was the out official. He's saying, you made the call way back here. How about somebody underneath the basket? Well, you can't see it underneath the basket on the baseline because you're partially screened by the bottom of the backboard. And now they're going to talk it over. And Johnny Orr is also going to be consulted. This is a strange one. Unless Hightower is going to change the call. One more time from underneath. And you're going to hear a roar or a boo here in a moment after Hightower. Watch it right there. 
Boy, from that angle, they now, call it a three-point basket. I was going to say, when I look at it right there, that looks like that was off. Well, how do they call it a three-point basket here? Perot touched it. Now he got... At any rate, it is now Iowa State basketball. The scoreboard says 62-55. Okay, now Johnny Orr has a chance at a correctable error at the next dead ball. If he doesn't get it for the next dead ball, he lets it go. Big pin, drives, bounce pass into Alexander, stripped away by Moses. And Iowa on a roll as Moses throws it up. Rebound, Jepson. Oh, Jepson becoming aggressive. You see what's happening now. It's going to the basket. It's spreading out. People are looking to pick up other people that get loose. Now I was free to go on the board. Well, now we are told from the scorer's table it was a two-point basket and give it to A.C. Earl. Okay, that's the right play. That is the fourth point of the ball game for A.C. Earl. So we have clarification from the scorer's table. But once again, we are down to a five-point game. Iowa State led by 18 in the first half. Iowa State's got to have some movement. They're standing right now. There's nothing more than they just move the ball several quick passes. Dorfeld off balance and a brick. He doesn't even draw iron. Better look to get it in the middle inside for that all big eight player. Victor Alexander. You need to try something in there, get a bucket or go to the line. Moses, Moses drives, doesn't get it. Rebound, fought four, loose on the floor. Dorfeld has it for a moment. Picked up by Alexander. Here's Woods one-on-one -on -one against Skinner. And he'll stop. And the blocking foul is called on Skinner. And a good it's call be a because Troy could not get set. It's going to be a basket. Got the foul. I think they're going to count the basket right. There we go again. Here comes Woods. He goes up. And he rule right there. That ball had started down. They get the foul on Skinner. Watch right here. A little change of pace gives him a little advantage. Skinner tries to fake and draw the foul. But there comes Thompson. Makes a bad play right there. Give Woods his 28th point of the ball game. 64-57. And Troy Skinner with his third foul. Tubbs comes back in. As does Ingram. Jepson goes out. And Woods will go to the line, shooting only one. Terry Woods is three of six, I believe, unofficially from the free throw line. It's a backbreaker type of play for the Iowa Hawks right there. You're coming back. Uh, they get out of it lucky with only two. Iowa quickly up court. And Moses rims it in and out. And the rebound, fought four, and it's out of bounds. Iowa State on the line was Cubs. So we're down to the 11-13 mark. Tom Davis questioning the call. He'll have time to talk it over as we take time out and Iowa State by seven. Just a reminder, at the end of the game, Gary Thompson and I will be selecting our Cyclone Player of the Game, sponsored by Garst. At Garst, it just keeps getting better. Shooting percentage sure has cooled off here in the second half. The first half, Iowa shot 54 percent. Iowa State 62 percent. Here in the second half, Iowa Hawks are shooting 39 percent. The Cyclones only 33 percent. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Skinner come off the bench against his own. Iowa State is struggling. They need some outside shooting. Well, I, I don't want. I, now I'm going to take that back because I see Skinner come off. I'm not one of those that says after he's in the ball game. I didn't see him come in, so I want to take that back. But I was looking for that. Johnny Orr, 19 and 10 against Iowa. Tom Davis, 2 and 1 against Iowa State. And the home team has won this game for the last four consecutive years. And also, Doug Collins is now in the lineup for Iowa State. He does the inbounds pass, and then Baker with a very careless pass. Iowa State with a pickoff. Or rather, Iowa with the interception. Ingram, and draws the foul from Baker. Iowa is taking it to Iowa State inside in the second half, and they are doing a good job of it. Well, turnovers now hurting Iowa State. Baker picks up his fourth, but Iowa really challenging Iowa State right now. They're just taking the ball to the basket. Well, Phil Koontz comes in, but not for Kirk Baker, who has four. He comes in for Victor Alexander, and apparently Alexander will rest up, and should Baker foul out, Alexander will have to go the final 11 minutes. Ingram hits the free throw, and that is a plus. A 20% free throw shooter who was one for three is now two of four. And watching the last few minutes, you've got five Iowa Hawks are just hustling all out, going for every loose ball. 
You see four Iowa State guys standing around, almost as say waiting for somebody else to do it. There's a case Offensive in point. Offensive rebound, Thompson. He'll get it. No, offensive foul. And Tom Davis can't believe it. Well, I was blocked out, couldn't see the play. It's first. Looks like Coons holding his jaw. He must have caught one. Let's see. Oh, there's Thompson, no doubt. He just moved right in. All right, and that's a good call. Well, Tom, you may not like it now, but when you watch the tape, maybe you might reconsider. But I doubt it. Coaches, <laughs> coaches never like to admit, well, maybe it was a foul. Tell you what, Tom Davis is one of the most gracious men in the game. And what a competitor. Woods thinks about the three. That's right. That's something he's got. Uh, he's backed off of that shot. Now he's missed a few in the first half. He'd have taken that shot right up. Terry Woods, a career high, 28 points, 23 in the first half. Only five here in the second. Now he gets called for the stutter step. And Iowa State not moving the basketball offensively at all. Got to move the ball quick. Every once in a while, give a ball fake with the flow and then come back against the gray. Jepson, Davis, and Earl back in for Iowa. And Tom Davis really doing a super job substitution-wise. And not only that, they've adjusted uh, their game in the second half and have really come back. Uh, they're back in the ball game. Inside, Earl going against Dorfeld and banks That's it off the glass and in. And A.C. Earl has picked up his sixth point. And nice. Jepson bothering Doug Collins. Remember, Collins has played only one game in a Cyclone uniform. He sat out the first game, the first two games with chicken pox. And then played, but only sparingly at Michigan. You play Iowa, that press stays on, you beat it for a while. And you handle it, and all of a sudden they make a little adjustment with it and uh, turn it on, and now they've gotten back in. They're causing some turnovers and causing the Cyclones all kinds of trouble with that pressure. Adrian Moore comes back, replacing Collins, and Moore playing with four fouls. Here's Thompson. Misses the easy one. Jepson there with the foul. They want traveling the fans do. Well, anyway. Things have just reversed. We talked about Iowa standing and Iowa State tipping the ball and going back in the boards. It's just the reverse right now. Iowa State kids are standing around and Iowa's just hitting the boards like uh, a Tom Davis team usually does. Iowa State content with an 18-point lead has watched it evaporate. Woods outside for three. It is a three-pointer for Terry Woods. 31 points. Here's Thompson. Bangs into Koontz. No foul call. And Thompson getting hot now. It's not taking Iowa any time at all. Uh, there's another turnover. He got it down, and the hops are rolling. Thompson with 19 points. And now the warning about touching the ball after it goes through the basket. And that allows Tom Davis to get a substitution in. Moses comes in for Rodell Davis. Officials should warn, uh, when that happens, officials warn both teams about touching the ball, and uh, if you touch it again and destroy the play, it's a technical foul. Brian Pearson up to Terry Woods. Decides to dish off, and no one there. Woods turns it over. Moses down. Iowa with a chance to take the lead, and they do. Boy, and credit Moses, not just for the basket, but holding up and not going in there and getting a charge. Smart play. The first Hawkeye lead of the game, and it comes with exactly nine minutes to play. Dorfeld now finds Woods, and Iowa State is self-destructing. Johnny Orr wants timeout. John wants to talk things over. The Hawkeye fans are on their feet here tonight. It's 68-61 Iowa, back in a moment. Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee like quick stat. Turnovers now dead even, 16 all. But watch this. In the first half, it was 14-9 Iowa. In the second half, Iowa State throws the ball away. A five turnover advantage for the Hawkeyes here in the second. Well, Cyclone fans, take a look at this picture. It's a record-breaking crowd at Cyclone Stadium in full color. And it was taken on the day of the Iowa-Iowa State game. Get your own 25-inch by 30-inch color poster of this picture for just $25. 
Send a check or money order to Alvar Limited. Post Office Box 568, TV, Des Moines, Iowa, 50302. Iowa State right now shooting 51% for the ball game, Iowa 49%. The Hawkeyes with an advantage in rebounding by six. And as we said, the turnovers dead even. This ball game is brand new. Forget the 18-point lead. Forget everything that's happened so far. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to decide this one. And Iowa by one. Alexander going to work. Feeds Dorfell for the slam. Good pass. Victor Alexander, a good pass. It's a big man. Good job, man. Moses for three. Air ball into the hands of Terry Woods. Here comes the Cyclones. They have a five on two. Woods to Alexander. Blocked by Earl, but he's fouled. By the way, that last jam by Dorfeld, the first two points by Paul in the ballgame. And A.C. Earl there, not happy picking up his fourth personal foul. Talked about points over turnovers in the first half. It was six for Iowa, 17 for Iowa State. In the second half, the Hawks have picked up 14 points off of turnovers. The Cyclones, zero. And Alexander will be at the line shooting two, but Victor has not been very good at this point in his game tonight. One of five at the free throw line so far tonight. <laughs> Iowa State with a one-point lead, 69-68. And Alexander is one of six. And here's another look at it. Here's how he got to the foul line. You see A.C. Earl going up. He gets a piece of the ball, but he also gets the arm. Victor back to the line to shoot the second free throw. And finally, Alexander gets the roll. Two of seven there as Brig Tubbs comes in, replacing Earl, who goes out with four fouls. Iowa State by two. Crowd trying to get in it now and help uh, Iowa State. They've been down as they've watched the Hawks come all the way back. And a grabbing foul underneath, away from the ball, whistled on Justice Thigpen of Iowa State. And that will put Iowa at the line because both teams have been in the bonus for the past three minutes. You've got Thigpen 6'2", uh, 190, going against Ray Thompson 6'5", 200. A concerned Iowa State uh, coaching staff right now as they've seen a 14-point halftime lead melt away. Thompson, one of one at the line tonight. He has finally missed one. But 21 points to his credit, an outstanding game for Thompson, who did not start tonight. Woods gets the penetration started, goes to Alexander, who can't hang on to the pass. And Iowa State turns it over, and then Dorfell dives for the ball and picks up his fourth foul of the game. Johnny Orr not saying a word. Hard to fall effort right here. Here comes Dorfell, turns him loose. He slips, sees the loose ball, and he dives for it. But Ooh. Garner, with his speed, just beats him back in there. Look at him coming up. Now gets control of it, yep. and Dorfell come from behind. That angle right there actually showed the foul. Garner, one of two at the free throw line. And Iowa has clawed to within one once again. They can tie it right here. 7.37 to go. And Brian with an excellent game against uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. He had five assists and only one turnover in that ball game. Big Ben slams the ball down and loses the handle on it. And it goes out of bounds, so it will be Iowa basketball. This game has never been tied. Two lead changes tonight. Moses on the move. Rebound. Air ball to Big Ben. Uh, that's two in a row for Moses, but his strength here lately has been taking that ball to the basket, either getting the drive or the... Alexander goes hard to the iron, and I think Victor's laughing a little bit. He lost control of the ball, but he still draws the foul from Tubbs. Right here he goes up. Looks like, I don't know whether he thought about uh, stuffing it maybe, it uh, changed his mind, and then he comes back, he gets position inside, and Tubbs over the top. Earl and Skinner come back in for Iowa. And Alexander, two of seven at the free throw line.
Victor comes into the ball game, averaging 20 points a game, and he is well short of that tonight. Misses the second. Iowa State 50 percent, 11 for 22. I've got him on free throws. Uh, Iowa 12 out of 18. I think Iowa State's playing a triangle and two right now. The Chasers are Woods and Thigpen. Thigpen guarding Thompson and Woods on Moses. And Thompson launches from long range anyway. And he's showing the outside shot. Basically, they talked about him playing around the paint. 24 for Ray Thompson. And Adrian Moore better hurry. Here they go. Iowa State quickly up the court. Four on two. Back to Alexander for the lay-in. Good look by Woods that time, taking his man away and then letting uh, Victor Alexander fill down the middle. And it's back to an Iowa State lead. It's a seesaw battle. Skinner may take the shot. I don't think Jepson will from way out there. Skinner does from three. Rebound Thompson. Fights his way free. And then uh -oh. tipped in by Earl and... They got away with one there, I think. I think the ball was still on yep. the iron, but nobody saw it. So give AC Earl two. There's the trap. You know what that ball? Good step through this time by Big Ben. Ahead to Alexander. Drops it back to Woods. He pulls up. And Terry Woods with 33 points in the ball game. Well, Woods has hit some key uh, baskets. Not only the first half, the second half. And Iowa State's really struggling. And maybe the three-pointer, he, he got it. Now he comes back and gives him a basket to put them back ahead by one. Everything you'd want in an interstate rivalry. And A.C. Earl. He gets it, Earl. And Earl now is catching fire. He has his eighth point in the book. Again, Big Ben Kraft tries to step through. And a foul on the step through. Fatigue might be setting in right now. Iowa right now looks like they've, they're not as aggressive. And they've been going strong this whole half, almost 15 minutes worth. Uh, credit Les Jepson for playing a fine game so far. Jepson, only his first personal foul in the ball game. As Johnny Orr talks strategy with his point guard. Justice Thigpen goes to the line without scoring so far tonight and has not shot a free throw. He's averaged uh, 11 points a ball game. And he misses here. And it went up hard, too. Thigpen came into the ball game hitting 57% from the line. And Iowa State has been atrocious in four games at the free throw strike. And we said several times earlier when the spreads were up to 14 points that free throwing would be very important. Probably take a, a turning point in this ball game. That's exactly what happened. Iowa with a one point lead. Five minutes exactly to play. Iowa State led by 18 in the first half, but the Hawkeyes have roared back in the second. Looking to ooh, almost comes down hard on the court, draws the foul, and Victor Alexander certainly got his money's worth here. And Iowa State not moving real crisp in the defense either. You see the man right in there deep inside the paint gets that position, and uh, Victor Alexander just whacks Wade looking bell. Wanted to make sure he didn't get the <laughs> basket and the foul, but looking bill is deadly from the line anyway. Super free throw shooter. Until you say something like that. Ingram back in for Iowa. Jepson comes out. And again, Tom Davis doing a masterful job of substitution. He's looking well. He is Iowa's Mr. Basketball in 88. He won't miss this one. And looking bill gives Iowa its biggest lead of the ball game. Two points. 77-75. charging foul or contact foul actually is going to be called on Davis as a blind pick is set up well, by Adrian Moore oh similar to what Iowa did in the first half bringing a man up to pick and there's Adrian Moore and what he does is so important is he sets himself and he stays there he doesn't move at all and uh, they pick up the uh, charging foul and Adrian Moore certainly felt the contact Thompson checks back in for Iowa. Going out is Davis. And Adrian Moore comes to the Iowa State free throw line, and he too has not been very successful, hitting 50% from the free throw stripe on the year. 
this game, I think it's going to be one right here, uh, here at the foul line by either team. You get down in the last couple minutes, either team behind is going to look for the foul. For Moore, his fifth point of the ball game. And he can tie it with this one. And done. Uh, so we are knotted at 77. First tie of the game. 440 left to play. And the fans starting to come into it once again. A sold out crowd. 13,000, 14,000 plus. You got the triangle and two defense, as you talked about a couple possessions ago. Playing the guards uh, head up man for man. Ingram penetrates. And the basket will count, and the foul is on Dorfell. He'll be gone, I think. That is five on Paul Dorfell, who will exit the ball game with only two points tonight. Count the hoop for Ingram. There's the penetration, and uh, Dorfell going there. Looks like maybe might have been sliding just a little bit. Johnny Orr wants time out to talk things over. Iowa with a two-point lead and at the free throw line when we return. Take a look at some other scores games going on tonight. Brought to you by Long John Silvers, where you can celebrate the season with holiday strip meals at Long John Silvers. Purdue over Illinois State at halftime by 11, 38-27. And North Carolina State demolished Duquesne tonight, 126-77. And here at Hilton Coliseum, it's the Iowa Hawkeyes by two after trailing by 18 in the first half. 4.21 to go, and Ingram at the line to make it a three-point play. Ingram with 10 points in the ballgame already. Iowa State with two more turnovers now than... The Hawkeyes, 18-16, and Johnny Orr with a question. Ed Hightower going to the scorer's table. And now Tom Davis also wandering over to see what's the delay. While there is timeout, let us remind you, you're watching the Cyclone Television Network. And coming up Saturday night, Iowa State will take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. At airtime, 7 o'clock on most of these same CTN stations. Problem resolved. Ingram at the line. And there was a question regarding timeouts at the scorer's table. Iowa now by three. Their biggest lead of the ball game and full court pressure. Once again, Moore goes over the top and gets it to Baker. And Iowa State better hustle across the timeline. Well, Iowa's defense has been good the second half. And there's turnover, and they got a man wide open. Slam time. Awesome. Awesome. Won't bring much applause or cheers here at Hilton Coliseum, but it, uh, it does to a lot of Hawkeye fans. 28 points for Thompson. Terry Woods now has it stripped from behind. Out of bounds, Iowa State. But a five-point Iowa lead. Their largest of the night, just under four minutes to play. 28 points for Ray Thompson off the bench. Terry Woods has game high honors so far with 33. And Adrian Moore has to go way outside to Baker. I would say it has to move this ball. They've got to get it themselves moving and the ball moving against this zone. It's either standing and holding. Two fast zone. And Woods from three. In and out. Rebound. Alexander tries to put it back up. Rejected by Earl. Casey Earl with... At least three blocks in the game now. He's a good shot blocker. 12 coming in, we said, which leads the Hawks. He waits for you. Got the size to do it. Alley-oop overthrown for Baker. Skinner with a three on two over to Thompson. And an offensive foul on Thompson. He missed the basket anyway. And give Thompson the charge. Well, you've got to credit Adrian Moore. I think it was Adrian Moore on defense, sliding back, getting positioned, then giving up his body. Here he comes. See if he gets there in time. Ooh, close call, boy. <laughs> he looks like he might have been just gliding a little bit. He really struggled to get that ball in. Here's the advantage. Three on two. Woods all the way to the hoop. Doesn't get the easy two, and the rebound comes down to Earl. And Iowa with a five-point lead, or rather, 
an 82-77 margin and 319 left to play first half. And now Tom Davis wants to spread it out. Going to run some clock. Being on the road. Woods that time took that three on two and made it a two on two instead of taking there and putting an open man on the break. But I think he's trying to do it himself as a senior. And the Hawkeyes have taken a sold out Hilton Coliseum crowd right out of the game. Thompson, three point effort, no good. Oh, back up and no good again. And it is off of Ingram out of bounds, Iowa State. So the Cyclones will have the ball, 2.46 to go. The great Collins comes back in for the Cyclones. Big Les Jepsen for Iowa. There's a break for Iowa State because A.C. Earl just playing an excellent uh, ball game, in my opinion. It was Aaron had it point back range. It just didn't get it. Baker, here it is, three on one this time. To Baker, takes it to the hoop, doesn't oh. get it. And Earl has just fouled out of the ball game as he undercuts Kirk Baker. And you can see that Baker's hurt. AC Earl leaves the game with eight points. But he played a tremendous ball game and rejected at least three shots. And, and that, not only the rejections that he had, but it was intimidation that he had on some other kickbacks that uh, would force his guys to change shot. There you see him going up. And uh, no intention there at all by A.C. Earl to undercut. Uh, just Baker just took it to him up, and then he leaned over, and that's what happened. She'd go over the top. I'm glad Baker is still holding on there. He might be hurting a little bit. But you got to take the charge facing the man, and he turned his back. And now coming in, Ingram once again. For Iowa State, a change. Alexander back on the bench, resting, and Phil Koontz comes in. Here's Baker. And he is the top free thrower for Iowa State. Ten points in the ball game. And the Cyclones need two now, but they get maybe one. And as we said, Kirk Baker, the best free throw shooter for Iowa State coming in. And Coons coming back in, I think, on this end, uh, defensive purposes. A, a five-point Iowa lead is cut to four. 242 to play. And now full court pressure. Almost stolen by Doug Collins. Ingram looks for help, gets it from Jepson. And there's Iowa now turning it over, and that's the same thing they did to start the ball game. Well, and Iowa State kind of came off of that pressure. They're, when you start missing shots, then it's not as easy to set that pressure defense. And that's what was happening to Iowa State. We said they cooled off to 33%. Collins gets it ahead to Woods. Over to Coons. Oh, good slam. Good play right there. Now the end points for Coons. And just that quickly, it's a two-point game. Now the Hawks have to fight off this crowd after that play. And there they throw it away. So far, this game has belonged to the crowd. This great interstate rivalry. And it's everything you'd want it to be as it comes down to the wire. 82-80, Iowa leading Iowa State. And keep in mind that the home team has won this game the last four consecutive years. As you said, it's just what you expect this type of game between Iowa and Iowa State. And uh, for Iowa, I feel like uh, Moses, Thompson, and A.C. Earl have really been key factors uh, in the second half. Johnny Orr making a change in his lineup right now. It will be Woods, Pearson, and Doug Collins, and the timeouts left. Could be important. One for Iowa State, two for Iowa. Three guards in the lineup now for the Cyclones. And Collins throws it away. It is loose on the court, picked up by the Hawkeyes. Ingram gets it over to Garner. Ahead to Moses. And he gets it. A four-point ball game and a costly bad pass for Iowa State. Can you believe this? The turnovers both clubs are making under this pressure. A lot of it, really a lot of inexperienced players uh, on both clubs. Young and uh, some of them that are older have not had that much playing time. There's another one. Woods with picked off one. by Thompson. Moses to give up. Back to Thompson. And Iowa storming to a six-point lead. Now Iowa State with only one timeout, so that puts them in a bad position. Baker not even looking at the hoop. He can shoot. Brian Pearson 
cuts it down to a three-point basket. And then Baker with an interception and a Hawkeye turnover. For right. Collins, Woods for three. Short. Rebound cut down by Ingram. A minute 18 left to play. A three-point game. Brian Pearson with two threes in the ball game. Woods, a career high, 33. Thompson, 30 points in the ball game for the Hawkeye. And Hawk doing a smart thing here, running the uh, the clock and so running it out. And and Johnny Johnny wants a foul call, and they finally get it as Terry Woods fouls Brian Garner. Woods had him to give because that's only his first. Garner, a 50%, 56% throw shooter. Well, we said to come down to free throw, I probably in this game, and uh, getting some fouls that are intentional, unintentional fouls and putting people on the line. But tonight, Brian Garner, two of three. That was 55% uh, on the year, 10 out of 18. And he misses. Well, a good check off that time by Coons. Iowa State down by three. They need a basket and a possession, or they'll have to hit the bomb. Brian Pearson would be the man who could probably best launch that long shot. And he'll take it. Doesn't hit it. Coons tries to follow. Baker keeps it alive. Tips out. Saved by Collins. He'll go from three. It's not there. Gotta Garner look to down. Foul the rebound. Gotta look to get a foul. Ahead to Moses. All of open is Thompson. He bobbles the ball. Gets the basket, basket and the foul. Basket. And Iowa may have just put away this game. 22 seconds to go. Tonight's game is brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by the Garst Seed Company. At Garst, it just keeps getting better. And by Long John Silvers. Celebrate the season where you can get holiday shrimp meals at Long John Silvers. Well, here's the story. 22.1 seconds to go. Iowa with a five-point lead over Iowa State. Ray Thompson at the line. Thompson with 32 points in the ball game. Also got credit for that list last hoop. Mark, it really looked like Iowa State was just searching for a shot. They had plenty, needed to take their time. You've got to get the good one, and I don't think that was the best shot. Pearson's the right guy to shoot the ball, but they needed to take time and get a good shot. Now Woods looking for somebody to shoot the three. Woods shakes free, lets it fly, he hits it. And Iowa State may have just used their last time out with 9.9 .9 seconds to go. 88-86. And it's time to announce our Garst Cyclone Player of the Game. And that gentleman is Terry Woods. At Garst, it just keeps getting better. Terry Woods, a career-high 36 points. So far, it's game-high honors. Well, not only 36 points, he had eight assists and four steals uh, for the Cyclones, but his 36 points will not mean anything to him, and uh, if Iowa State isn't able to pull this ball game out. Got to give credit to the Iowa Hawks. They've really battled back in this second half with a defensive pressure. And, of course, Gary, we'd like to point out for our Iowa fans watching the ball game, we have a tradition of picking the Cyclone player of the game, just as they do on the Iowa Network. I guess if you'd have to pick an Iowa player of the game tonight, it'd have to be Ray Thompson, no doubt about that. 32 points. You know, the funny thing, he got about 10 quick points in the first half, then got a couple really late, kind of disappeared. Now the second half, he's really been active in the ball game. But I credit going back to Moses in the first part of this half, when he really took it on himself, really, to penetrate and go to the basket. And that's where Iowa really got their start in coming back. He just went to the basket quick, either was getting the basket or getting fouled. Iowa State lived with their break in the first half. In the second half, Iowa slowed up the tempo of the ball game, hustled back on defense, took away Iowa State's game, and Iowa clawed their way back into the contest. Well, it was critical during the time when Iowa was getting the break, but it was a three-on-two uh, situation. Iowa was getting back instead of that two-on-one that they had in the first half, and Iowa State simply missed the, the wide-open 15-footers, and that's what happens on that press. It gives up something, 
If you don't hit that shot, you get in trouble. Let's see if Johnny Orr has called a designated foul here. Garner gets it away to Thompson. They're playing keep away. Jepson trying to get the ball away. Stolen away by Moore. A foul call by Ed Hightower on Les Jepson. The foul is against Iowa. And Iowa State will have a one in bonus coming with 3.9 seconds to go. And Moore, I think, is two for two from the free throw line in this ball game. He's only shot four free throws coming into this game. Boy, you talk about pressure. Iowa, Iowa State. You're a cyclone on the line, down by two. And Iowa and will fire to Ison. Tom Davis has a timeout to burn, and he'll call it right now. 3.9 seconds left to go in the game. Iowa leading by two, 88-86. Adrian Moore with a chance to tie. Moore with only six points in the ballgame so far. Well, it's been everything it always has been, actually. Every time these two get together, with the exception of last year. You know, three tremendous players for the Hawkeyes meant a 20-point spread in the end. And here are some of the good people making our telecast possible tonight. Last year, of course, it was B.J. Armstrong leading the way in that Great contest over at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Roy Marble and Ed Horton, all three in double figures. And Iowa beat Iowa State by 20. Two years ago here at Hilton Coliseum, LaFesta Rhodes with a career high and a school record, 54 points. It took overtime for Iowa State to win 102 to 100. And maybe we're headed in that same direction here tonight. If Adrian Moore can sink two, the Hawkeyes will have four seconds to go. And we want to say thank you to our statistician tonight, Ted Tedesco, who has done an extremely good job keeping us abreast of all the numbers. And there's the big number right now. Well, you mentioned those uh, trio players from Iowa, and uh, Armstrong doing a nice job with the Bulls. He's been playing uh, well, watching his stats, and uh, just playing excellent basketball for the limited time that he's playing. And how about all those preseason polls and picks? <laughs> Iowa has proved them wrong. The Hawkeyes out to a 4-0 and start. What a credit to Tom Davis. Certainly a young, inexperienced team, but playing like veterans tonight. And here's the ball game right here. We don't need to say a word. You can listen to either the moan or the roar. Surprise, maybe uh, on this side you've got Collins. He's a good jumper. Look at boy, what a clutch free throw that is. That should make this one easier. I was surprised maybe there wasn't a bigger guy on this side on the lane. He missed it. He's got the rebound. It's loose. Iowa's got it. And a foul call with six tenths of a second to play. The ball game will go to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Find out who the foul is on in just a moment. The foul is on Justice Thigpen, his fourth. Justice Thigpen, by the way, comes into the ball game a starter, averaging 11 points a contest over three games as a freshman. And tonight is held scoreless. Garner goes to the line. Four points in the ball game for Garner. Make it five and a two point. Iowa margin right now, 89-87. Six tenths of a second. And the Hawkeyes will go to 5-0. and oh. He misses the second. The clock goes. And it is over. And the Iowa Hawkeyes, after being down by 18 points in the first half, come back to win it. 89-87. Johnny Orr and Tom Davis shaking hands. Hope you enjoyed our game for Gary Thompson, Mark Matthews saying goodbye from Hilton Coliseum. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Cyclone Television Network.